Um, <laughs> I literally just went into high altitude track. It's like rain, rain, go away. It is literally almost like that. That morning. cat is pretty accurate, is, I think, for how uh, I felt yesterday. For how wet he is. Uh, let's have a look then. Who's who's going to be joining us? Who's going to be the first one today? The first one um, today. Let's check if we're live. Could be any number of Could people. Could be anyone. And yes, we are live. Yeah, nice to be back, Dave. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it's been a little while, isn't it? Been uh, out on our adventures. Well, we've been off. I know you, you something to do with your birthday, apparently. Yeah, no, yeah, I was um, uh, reached the uh, um, I was thirty on um, the fourth of May, which um, is now Star Wars Day, but it was my birthday first. Forty? You are you bad at math? No, no, 30. 30. 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, forty. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's all good. Well, happy birthday! Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, it was great. I had a little bit of time off and um, yeah. relaxed, and now I'm back. I've just noticed Laura Collins is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now. Laura, what's happened? Honest to God. What's going on? It's not going well. <laughs> it's not going well. No. Um, but great to see loads of other ever trackers on here as well. Anthony, we've got Alison, we've got Rich, Marky V, how you doing? Uh, Jerome. Um, Jerome reporting in. Great to, great to hear from you guys. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm sure we can all wish uh, Dave a massive happy birthday for last week's 40th. 30th. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, it was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, forty years young, and I don't feel a day over thirty-nine. Um, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, uh, I was Andrea on you as well. Hey, Andrea, fresh off Namaste, base camp. Andrea. Um, what's him show, Jerome? I reckon I don't know if there's any way to work this out. Yeah. I think he's been on more Tuesday tune-ins than anyone else. We'll have to go through the stats. I mean, there's there's been a fair few. I um, if there's a way to track that, it would be amazing, wouldn't it? I know. I unfortunately mm. Facebook isn't amazing when it comes to data it gives you unfortunately yeah uh we got mark Vigors, dave i'm gonna put this fan on because otherwise yeah it's, you, it's warm isn't it warm. it's warm um there's jen's literally this is i mean we're in jen's this is jen's area yeah she has like the best office i'm in the broom cupboard mm -hmm. the fixer of everything oh no this backwards mirror, backwards mirror that's a shame anyway that does say the fixer of everything yeah she is um who we got we got pratesh uh we got mark it's great to have um, so many people on today because we, it's very apt really. It's been a bit of a, a damp uh, couple of weeks in terms of weather. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we don't need much of an excuse to talk about Kia, especially with Dave. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, let's talk about, let's talk about waterproofs. So I have to bring mine. This is show and tell, isn't it? It's like being back yeah, in my, I don't, uh, mine is, um, I think it's somewhere, somewhere in Tupacal. Somewhere in Tupacal, yeah. I'll probably move on from Tupacal now when it's back. <laughs> Uh, back home. Also, yeah, someone said, um, and Alison said, nice backdrop. Can any of you guess or do you Ooh. know which backdrop that is? Because um, it's a real place. We it know is that. a real place. Uh, big clues. I'm just trying to think, is there any clues I, I don't, I don't on think. that image of where it is? I think um, who's going to get it first? I think anyone that's obviously been to this place will yeah. have a clear um, um, advantage. Yeah. Uh, but I'll give you a clue. Obviously, there's a lot of oh, hang on, let me see if they places get it first, there. I reckon. Oh, Marky V, he's always there, isn't he? <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, Mark, it's not Nampshire Bazaar. That is Newport in South Wales, <laughs> um, just uh, just by the uh, the clock tower at the Civic Centre. If that was Newport, I'd be I'd be moving. <laughs> yeah, it's got some beautiful mountains in that place. But yeah, well done, guys. Uh, yeah, we got just trying to read what James has done there. Hey, James, how you doing, mate? It's like a little weird icon. Oh yeah, I think that happens sometimes when people put like a um like a like, an emoji. Like, yeah, but it doesn't work. Oh really? It says OBJ. I think. OBJ. Okay. I've seen it a lot. Nice. But um, waterproofs. <laughs> so um, he lives in the Bahamas. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, we don't need waterproofs there. Um, uh, it, it, you don't need much of an opportunity um to find rain. <laughs> it's usually here, like generally mm. majority of the time, um, and especially. I know it's a lot of people jumped on the uh, training weekend um, for August. We're really looking forward to seeing everyone who's coming on the August training weekend yeah. and also the one on the October training weekend. So, yeah, thanks for, for booking in. You still can book in onto those dates. There's still a few spaces left on the August one, I believe. Um, so, yeah, definitely jump in if that's something that you, um, you, know, you wanted to come and uh, meet myself and Dave and, and have an awesome weekend of trekking in uh, Banai Brekenjog or Brecon Beacons, as mm -hmm. everyone no, as, a, as Rishi would have you say it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but right, anyway, just to start with um, uh, maybe, you know, when we talk of waterproofs, I was trying to get a royal 
kind of connection to this and i can't mm. get one any connections dave uh what do you do? if you're trying uh, to get let, the king, let, let one percolate or we could say the king of waterproofs yeah or when you go out and it's king raining um <laughs> Almost <laughs> You know, that's the only way. That I is that is very, very good. Yeah. Um yeah, that's never a, far away from the uh, that's the, the best I can think of. But yeah, no, we um as you know, you know, it's May, it's uh the height of springtime, summer's around the corner. So it's a good time to talk about what you're gonna need your wet weather for the year for <laughs> because you know, we do a lot of training in Wales yeah. and the UK. Yeah. Um, which means that we're getting close to that time of year where yeah. we expect sunshine, but billions of gallons of water are gonna fall from the sky. Um <laughs> I actually went out yesterday. A little spur of the moment afternoon hike at one o'clock in the afternoon i thought you know what? i really don't want to sit around all day yeah, yeah so i thought i'll go up and i'll do uh, uh just do a little training walk up and down penavan nice i got drenched i was gonna say i, I it was a wet one yesterday absolutely <laughs> drenched and um you know when people say there's no bad weather just bad equipment yeah well i brought bad equipment to hey. the bad weather uh, because on, when I left Newport, it was all right, you know, and I was like, ah, it's not too bad. It won't take me long. So lesson number Dave. one, don't listen to Dave. Yeah. He talks about waterproofs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like one of those, um, who's that famous weatherman that always the famous Michael Fish. Yeah. Famously said it was going to be nice. And then we had one of the worst storms ever. Yeah. 1980s, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, that, that was me yesterday. I was, uh, <laughs> I was Mr. Fish. And, Should have checked um, the Met Office, mate. Um, but good, to, good to get out in the rain. And, you know, essentially on, on majority of our trips, because we had, we had a question, I think it was. Maybe last week or week before around you know okay waterproofs which trips do we need to take you know need to take waterproof and and to be honest any trip that you're gonna gonna if it's an ever track trip you're gonna need waterproof at some point i mean there are the rare rare occasion i'd say the one trip we're probably not gonna get rain and this is this is this, this is me putting it out there now is on mount tukal um mm. although it's, mm. it, it is rare because as it's you said that you realize mm. it started raining in Tuskal as soon as we say that <laughs> but no you are right because yeah, the yeah. times of year that we tend to do it tend to be sort of summertime yeah um or winter time so generally speaking you're going to be good for rain yeah um well good to avoid the rain like in the summer it's it's an oven um well rosie's been out this weekend um oh she smashed it yeah, yeah. she she climbed to cal on was it saturday morning saturday morning yeah. saturday morning with her dad mike yeah um yeah so and and see the pictures and it looked hot yeah i think yeah and any if you go in from may um any i mean we went in april last year still pretty warm during the day um especially on the, the first day of trekking up to the refuge but um yeah marrakesh is above 30 right now it's about 40. yeah so as you creep into the summer um so yeah, as we as we start talking about waterproofs, we start kind of getting into the hot weather first. Yeah. Um, but no, if you talk about a trip, they probably won't need one. That's that's it. Any other trip though, you want to be bringing your waterproof jacket yeah. just in case. Almost I mean, certainly. You know, yeah. Jerome uh, mentioned ponchos there. Very popular on Kili. And I'll bring this in because I realised over the last um, few bits we haven't been bringing these in. But I thought I'd uh, bring Jerome into the comments there. Can we also include ponchos in the chat? Yeah. No. We like a good ponch. Exactly. Yeah. So you'll find that. Um, it's weird there's almost like yeah. trends that and sort of certain yeah. ways of doing things that suit certain trips you definitely see ponchos pretty much on all the trips we do but they're really really popular on kilimanjaro yeah um and i suspect that that's because kilimanjaro having its own microclimate yeah. means that you you get these regular light showers all the time um but because it can be so warm beforehand you don't really want to just stop put on waterproof trousers put on a waterproof jacket walk for an hour take it all off again yeah. because it's these sudden light showers the ponchos work fantastic what i will say my recommendation with the ponchos is buy one um like a reusable one that's like a good nice yeah. thick material sustainability and everything yeah exactly there are disposable ones that you know you know we, we, we've all used them um you've got yeah. anyone's been to a festival you know they're handed out or you can buy them and um, you certainly see uh the, the like you said killy the porters use them yeah but there are decent ones now we actually can reuse oh yeah they're just like jackets they're right? really really good yeah pretty yeah. much same material as like most jackets and things like yeah. that you can get gore-tex ones um i've it's used bad, a couple it? of those um disposable ones yeah and um yeah i i realized after i like got it out on killy that i had royally messed up what'd you get out on killy the poncho <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah really. thanks for clarifying yeah yeah the, pon <laughs> the poncho um just because they're not very good yeah, yeah. you know they're designed for kind of like I festival use and stuff like that but they're not really suitable for trekking in and stuff like that I don't yeah majority of the time if I'm doing any serious exercise with a poncho on I'm 
it's warm in there. Oh yeah, you get like there's not much there's not much wicking coming in no. with that compared to like a Gore-Tex. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a plastic bag. Yeah. Well, yeah. as James says, nothing wrong with a good old black bin bag with a head hooker. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that in. That's gonna be is, that's gonna be our equipment advice. Yeah, ultra yeah. light trekkers bring yeah. a bin bag. That's like Alpine style. I think, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, but personally, Brilliant. I never really use ponchos um, yeah. because I always have my Gore-Tex jacket, or I yeah. did before it was swiped. Um, but that's another good thing. Always look after your Gore-Tex jackets. But yeah, we're talking about jackets, always look after. Your yeah, jacket. but largely because I just think they're such a. It's it's really versatile. Yeah. Like for me, it's not just. I don't only wear it when it's you know raining. I'll wear it as like a windstopper. I'll wear it as just a general sort of layer to put on when I'm having lunch and things like that. Yeah, yeah. it's really really good. Um, and they do, as Jerome says, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep bringing these comments in because we've got some really good comments today. Um, anyone any questions as well? I know that we've been doing these Tuesday tune-ins now for oh just over three years, and uh, as I can see, Vicky just going to the post office with um, we ran a little um, a competition over on Instagram. Sorry, David, you're heating up. No, I know it's more the eyes. Like, <laughs> it's like, like, but there's like a fan, like, and I'm like, I, normally I have spectacles on, but I've lost my spectacles. <laughs> um, yeah, Vicky is delivering the, um, uh, so we had, uh, I think, a competition winner called Steph, who won a couple of Osprey bags, um, some other uh, content, uh, content, other uh, gear. Mm. Oh, Content's free. Content of the yeah. box. The content's free. Um, so yeah, thanks to everyone that participated in that over on Instagram. Yeah, um, that went really well. I know Rosie and Zach were um, organising it, and um, with our partners at Cotswold Outdoors. So yeah, yeah, very, very, very good. And um, same with Osprey. Um, but yeah, whilst talking about rucksacks, but Jerome makes a good point there. Going back to the ponchos, um, you know, they do cover your rucksack as well. Although you know, if you are out in um, say windy conditions, especially in the British mountains. Um, most bags these days do come with a waterproof cover yeah. that you can put over your rucksack, um, which probably do a bit more protection than the ponchos. But that being said, the poncho is, is, is light, it's quick, it's easy. Yeah. And, they, you know, they are quite light, so you can squeeze one into your pack. And it's, it's, there's no reason why not. Like I said, and yeah, if I was doing Kilimanjaro again, I'd 100% pack one. 100%, purely because most of the time, like I say, you're not trekking in waterproofs. Yeah. Generally speaking, if you're going on a trip and you need your waterproofs, it's pretty evident from the moment you set off to the moment you end. Really, yeah. uh, it's sad, isn't it? Really, can I think of a trek where mm. it rained in the middle and then it was fine? <laughs> you know, it's, it's for me, it's always like drenched it's part of the journey, all right? day. Part of the journey. Um, I suppose one of the things that I that I wanted to mention as well, probably the most important, I think, is um, is like, hello to Jim from Lands End. Um, <laughs> who, who from Lands End? Jim. Oh, Jimbo Blue. Hello. Hey, Jim. from I'm bringing these comments in. Yeah, no, I no, I feel see like it. we yeah. haven't been utilizing it. Like. Yeah, no. But, well, hey, Jim, I hope all is well and you're staying dry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, boots. We've got a lot of boots already. Boots wow. Well, it's 13 I minutes. I find it easier to start at the bottom and work my way okay, up. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. You know, and I think this is probably, I think, one of the most important pieces of like waterproof. Um, true, true, yeah, yeah. Waterproof uh, equipment. Yeah. Because generally speaking, if anything sort of above the ankles gets wet, trousers, whatever, not, yeah. you can usually dry them out pretty effectively, like yeah. in no time at all. If you end up with a pair of hiking boots that you need to wear on multiple days that get absolutely soaked through, yeah. you, you you ain't drying them bad boys out for That's a true. while. That is very true. And there's nothing more demoralizing than when you wake up yeah. and you have to put your foot in and you get that squelch because your boots are absolutely sodden. Mm. Um, but really, most Brilliant. boots these days are waterproof to a degree. Um, but one of the things I was going to mention about them is like the care and the looking after of the waterproofness of your equipment particularly like boots and jackets. They don't, you buy them waterproof, but generally speaking, they don't stay waterproof for very long. Yeah. Um, and in order to keep them nice and waterproof, pretty much after most hikes, you want to kind of retreat them and stuff like that. It's really yeah. important, particularly with jackets. I find boots will last a while. My jackets, I find that the first time I wear it out and it's raining and it's just beading on top and it looks great. Oh, it's nothing like a new jacket. Like yeah. That. One that's been treated. You know, so you care for it. Exactly. You can do that. You can do that for a long time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But then once it gets completely sodden and it stops beading yeah. or you notice little leaks, you've got to treat that stuff. Yeah. So you can get um, like Nick Wax treatment. Yeah. I think Wrangler, Rangers or what do you call uh, it? Oh, Wranglers uh, or Rangers? Or... Gonna, yeah. it's, it's in between Wranglers and Rangers, oh, I think. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, Rangers. 
Granger's, nice. yeah, Granger's. Do, our our well. brains were switching back on then. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks since we've uh, since we've been I was on say, there. We, so we've been out and about. Yeah, it. we're not firing on all <laughs> cylinders, but um, yeah, no, it's really important to look after that stuff. Um, usually, what I find yeah. is the best way. You can do like an instant treatment where you can kind of just spray it. Yeah, yeah. But for the really, really good methods, you want to kind of wash um your item with that yeah. treatment um in like in following the instructions and then when it comes out again you'll wear it and it'll be great yeah. and if you keep doing it on a regular basis your waterproof jacket that you've invested a bit of money in will last a long time and yeah. so will your boots if you're i'll be honest i've done this in the past left it like a year between treatments or two years between that treatments is, you're it's not gonna last very long no you're fighting an uphill <laughs> battle and once it's been saturated yeah. over and over and over again yeah it's uh you may as well put a colander on your head a colander just a big shout out to chris from namche namaste chris i hope you're enjoying um base camp uh, and good luck um all the way from namche awesome. where, where is he do you reckon he's in one of these, one of these uh, yeah. he is probably so, chris the, he, wave chris <laughs> <laughs> no he is unfortunately where we are um he should be where we are anyway um uh, this area is where the yeah. lodges are it's hard because this is reversed. Um, Joel Palmer, hey Yetis, happy belated birthday day. Thank you. Getting lots of birthday love. Um, and actually, this is quite interesting. I saw my dad do this last week. Um, newspapers are a great way to dry out walking boots. Yeah, um, 100%. My uh, my dad wasn't wearing walking boots, but he was actually wearing some gold shoes. And I noticed, and I said, Dad, what putting all the newspaper in, uh, which he did, because mm. not that I do. Um, I usually just dry them, dry them at home and. Uh, under the radiator and he's like yeah they're great for drying out and i was like big respect to protesh um yeah it's it's something that is nice and simple you know we've mm -hmm. gone from literally what um james has said which is using bin bags to using yeah papers. so you can keep it a basic today in the advice so i'm just thinking about how i might do this so i've gone out for a nice trek yeah, yeah. pretty tired i got soaked on yeah. my way home stop off stop at the chippy have the a bag chippy. of chips okay yeah yeah then recycle that newspaper into my boots I mean, just going to say, there's probably some grease on those newspapers, which probably doesn't make the point smell that valid, well. But that's like dubbing. That's that's like dubbing. <laughs> the smell is one thing, but that's like dubbing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, another question from Alison, which is a good one. What's the difference between Gore-Tex and really Paramo? Good, it's a really good question. So, yeah, there's quite a little bit of science behind that yeah, answer. Um, but essentially, it's, it's, it's two different technologies and two different types of materials. They yeah. work very differently. So Gore-Tex... Is this kind of waterproof but breathable membrane um and you'll notice a distinctive way when you um essentially they're both waterproof um but when rain lands on a gore-tex jacket should have bought some paramo in like right? yeah the, the idea is you want it beads on the jacket so you yeah. end up with hundreds and thousands of little like little tiny water beads and if you kind of go like that they'll all just fall off you so that's gore-tex right? that's gore-tex yeah, 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 yeah. paramo works differently so it's more of a softer material so Gore-Tex is quite, you know, crunchy and it's like a loud material. Noisy. Paramo is more of a soft shell, yeah. soft shell material, so it's quite quiet and like feels completely different. And actually, when you look at the jacket, you may think, "Wow, this doesn't feel waterproof," because we're, yeah. we're programmed to think of waterproof jackets as like a Gore-Tex one. But actually, it works brilliantly. It involves some form of nick wax technology that's yeah. built into the fabric. Um, and I think there's multiple layers it's there. Usually, at least and, three layer membranes. So yeah. Some, some of the newer ones that. The Gore-Tex Pro have five layers, but they yeah, essentially with Gore-Tex, it's yeah, it's got these different layers, but each one does a different thing. And I think the one I, I'm a I'm a Gore-Tex person rather than a Paramo. Still, even though all my mountain guy friends they all wear Paramo, and they yeah. swear by it. It's expensive. Um, yeah, it is, isn't it? But it's uh, and and some Gore-Tex can be, but there's you know definitely yeah. a lot of jackets out there, and and people are like, oh, what do I get? You know, do I go ahead? Do I go big and buy the Paramo or do I go for a, you know, a hundred pound Gore-Tex jacket and go outdoors? You know, there, there's lots of options out there and, you know, certainly don't go into overdraft for it. Uh, you know, there's, um, uh, you know, there's lots of jackets out there. You don't need the, the all singing dancing. One. Well, yeah, this... but they do, you know, the, the ones I've had, I've spent big money on, like the, like the, the Evertrek one we got there, it's only about 150 pound new. Obviously that's our branded one. There are ones out there that you could pay. I think my old Berghaus Extreme was four hundred pounds, and oh. I've had it for about five years. Arcteryx do a six hundred pound one, but you know what? It's bomb proof. Yeah, I stay dry with that. Like every time, it's a bit like um, 
the mountain equipment uh, look see jacket, which is it, it's similar bomb. It, it's labeled as bomb proof um, in terms of rain, not bombs. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of you know what what you can get out of it. Um, but certainly, you know, find one that fits you. Get out. Obviously, you know, one that you like the look of as well. Um, you know, we we it's quite funny because sometimes we're out in the mountain, out in the mountains, and you can see people who've got the brightest jacket and they're great. You can yeah. all yours know with it. Well, yeah. we always wear black. I always wear and black. Not, yeah, so blend in a bit, always black. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it really is worth investing. I think yeah. in the be in into the best one that you can afford. Yeah. It gen, you know, when I say buy the best one, generally what I'm really saying is spend as more money um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. you generally get what you pay for. However, I've got a the jacket I'm using at the moment that I'm going to replace. I'm going to replace. It's just a, a little bit of a uh, it's dry throat. Is a little bit of some a, my water. Is it, uh, yeah, I'll grab a glass in a minute. You sure? Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a cheaper make, um, but it's really good, and it's honestly crap. Um, <laughs> uh, like like I, it's really good if you're caught in a shower. It's really good if you're yeah. just going to wear it around town and you don't want like a you know ruin your expensive jacket. Yeah. Having said that, honest to God, I was soaked through within about 20 minutes yesterday. Wow, really? You know, really, honestly, yeah. And it's because I paid, I think, about 60 pound on it. Yeah. Um, you know, so fine. You know, if that's the best that you can do, that's the best that you can do. Um, you, you know, I it for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, it's just not this, not the best jacket. But so it's not strictly designed for mountain, no, sustained, it, heavy driving rain. It's 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 kind of a downpour when you're walking through town. Exactly. Yeah. Or you know, a city center or something. Exactly. Yeah. Not for not for the the mountain environment. Uh, but Samantha Wright as well, listening uh, to you from hospital bed, much better now. Uh, can't wait for Island Peak next year. Samantha, speedy recovery. Yeah. I hope all is well. Um, and just going through as well, I think Wendy, Wendy McCauley, how you doing? Well, Hiking Boots got drenched uh, on the uh, Annapurna Base Camp trek. Tea House had the fire going. Uh, put my boots on their side and they dried out overnight. Happy days. Yeah. It's actually um, interesting because I think uh, Jerome, Jerome's got all the comments today. He's doing really well. Does drying your boots next to a fire or a heat source damage them in any way? Uh, Which uh, is a really good question because, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'd say if you're using like um, in, in, in the tea house, I wouldn't put them on top. Around, I think, is okay. Like anything, you know, the closer you get to heat, there's a chance it could change form, it yeah. could melt, um, especially to any skiers out there. I wouldn't recommend putting ski boots in here because they do change. I've, I've, I've had a couple of friends who've had some funny instances, yeah. incidents. Um, but I'd say it's okay, like like for myself, I, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the life, I put my boots, if they're wet, just under a radiator. It's never had any harm. Um, I mean, you know, obviously you don't want to risk any damage because some boots can be yeah. you know, two, 300 pounds and, and they can get wrecked. Yeah. Well, um, you don't have to put them under an extreme heat, you know, yeah, close yeah. to a warm, you know, like oven or radiator or whatever is going to yeah. be enough. Unless you do the Glencoe challenge with Andy <laughs> and he's got to dry out his clothes. Um, oh, yes. He went on a trek the day before we did the Glencoe challenge and got drenched. So we were in a tiny it's little, a good tiny little <laughs> hut. Do you remember? And you turned the radiator on oh, whilst yeah, you warmed nice. your, whilst you dried your clothes. We opened the door. You could not get in that room. You had to wait a few minutes. It was uh, it was pretty intense. That's right. Because I I think we we it was one of the pods. Yeah. One of the camping pods in um, Glen Nevis. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Campsite. Yeah. And you know you put the heating on as you do um, to, to dry your clothes. Yeah. We. Were... <laughs> I'm surprised nothing melted. That uh, I'm surprised. That was a bit of a schoolboy. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Yeah, that, that was everything intense. was dry. But, you, so... but your boots survived. They were okay. And the jackets. And the jacket, yeah. yeah. So they were all fine. So no obvious Ready for the damage. Glencoe Challenge. Um, yeah. I'm kind of gutted actually not doing the Glencoe Challenge this year. Yeah. Uh, but we're off to Scotland in a couple of weeks um, to do some other other Munros and, and mountains. Really looking forward to it. But to anyone doing the Glencoe Challenge, I know he's quite a lot of Evertrekkers this year. Enjoy. Yeah. Can't wait to see some um, some pictures. Exactly. Uh, Mark Biggers has asked a question. Hey, Any Mark? brand recommendations for jackets? Ooh, um, Mark, yeah. Uh, Honestly, I think I usually look good at question. mountain equipment. Uh, Rab, yeah, Berghaus, big ones. Um, Montaigne do some decent ones. Montaigne, Paramo, yeah, Paramo generally really good. Um, Berghaus do some really good. They're extreme range. Arch I've used personally. Architerix are yeah. really good, but my God, they're expensive. They are. Expensive, like I need yeah. to look into exactly why 
you would pay 600 pounds for an Arcteryx like Gore-Tex jacket. Like what technology is going into that that makes it worth more than a 500 or 400 pound one, you know? Sometimes, you know, I, I think we've, we've all seen, it can be, uh, it can be the brand, it can be the name. Yeah. Uh, there are certain uh, brands out there that, you know, you almost think, wow, that seems a bit overpriced, but people still buy it. I mean, certainly Architerics is a high, a brand. high end brand, yeah, yeah. you know, so they don't really make, you know, a lot of budget stuff. It's all pretty yeah. high end. Um, but yeah, six hundred pound is 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 a lot by anyone's money for like a, a Gore-Tex jacket. Considering like what type of down jacket you can get from that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like some summit uh, suits that you can use on um, Everest are like a grand. Yeah, you know, so yeah, you only are. like a few hundred quid away from that. It's a good question, though, Mark. Is I mean, there's so many jackets out there. I think sometimes we can get caught up and in, in in getting the best, and you know, we are we, we obviously want quality because if you go into anywhere like. Everest Base Camp, Kilimanjaro, Machu Picchu, um, you know, you come into any, anywhere that you can get rain, essentially, you know, if you're out in the UK, um, you yeah. know, and a lot of the gear used on these trips, you've probably already got. Um, I think someone asked a question, I think it was Colin, actually, I'll bring, Colin, I can bring you a question up, um, do a base camp with you in October, awesome, got a decent waterproof down jacket that packs up, take both and layer up if needed, yes. Yeah. Essentially, I mean, so you want to be using two different things here, so let's let's stick with the, the waterproofs first um and yeah you might use that for the first couple of days some people and not everyone i mean th this is me included actually i like i like actually hiking in my in my uh, waterproofs um so i'll wear just a base layer and this goes for every space camp which i've done a couple of times in october um with with dab as well over a few years back now yeah yeah but wearing just a base layer um you know so a nice uh, you know nice nice base layer you know make sure that it's um, you know, some people like to wear long sleeve or short sleeve, whatever works for you. Um, you know, in October, it's not that cold. You, you're coming out of winter. Uh, sorry, you're coming out of monsoon, kind of halfway between monsoon, sort of summer months and winter. So it's pretty decent temperatures, especially in the day. But then the evening, you'll be wearing your, your down jacket because that's yep. really cold. But if you're, if you're hiking wearing your waterproof, you've got to be thinking, because I've seen some people do this on a rare occasion, is that they'll put the waterproof over their down jacket. Yeah. Don't kind of recommend that. It's more about working the layers. So you've got your base layer and your waterproof. If you're getting cold, then wear something on top of your base layer, so like a mid-layer fleece, and then your uh, jacket. Um, if you are getting really cold, then some people do have to take, keep the bo bottom two layers on, take the waterproof off, and then go with the down jacket. Problem with that is, is that you can sweat quite a lot if you're ex overexerting yourself yeah. with a down jacket. So definitely layers is a big one. and. Not everyone gets it right. I've certainly took me years to work out what works for my body. Like Dave, you mm. you kind of probably sweat a bit more than I do. So you don't really like hiking in down jackets. You prefer no, no. waterproofs. So what you find what works for you. Exactly, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, to, to trek in a down jacket, for me, it's got to be pretty, pretty, pretty cold. You're talking like minus 10, 15, maybe. Um, you know, I'm thinking anything above that. And then I usually find a, like a, a warm base layer, yeah. a mid layer and a Gore-Tex jacket, yeah. hat, gloves is enough as I'm moving and climbing uphill to keep me warm. Yeah. Because it's equally as, as important in a really cold environment not to like overexert and sweat. Um, because if you sweat a lot, generally speaking, as soon as you stop, your body temperature is going to start to drop. Um, so you want to try and keep yourself in that comfort range. Um, a soldier once told me if you're warm when you set off, you've got too much on. Um, that's that's a good that's a good that's a very you know, good point. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. a lot of people do this because an example for instance you're about to climb Tupacal you're in the refuge having breakfast it's dark outside it's cold but you're inside and you want to be you want to be warm so when you leave you want to be warm um, but generally speaking what I try and do is when I start I might be like oh a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. but I want to get going and then it's literally yeah. a few minutes of climbing uphill and I'm warm and all of a sudden I'm good and what is better to do is just put stuff on and off. It annoys me sometimes. Like you're climbing up and I'm like, right, stop for a second while we wait and put crampons on. I'll put a jacket on, keep myself warm. As soon as I start again, I'll take it off. Um, so it is kind of, you know, good to do that. But what it means yeah. is that I stay pretty comfortable the entire time. The only time I really struggle is if it's like a frying pan and I <laughs> trying to cool yourself down is way harder than trying to warm up. I like that though. If you if you if you're warm when you start, you've got too much on. Yeah, that's a good thing, a good point to remember. I like that, Dave. Um, yeah. Anthony mentions Anthony Christian. Uh, he is a massive no. I hiked out to Mosdell Bothy of the Lakes. Sounds cool. Uh, might find a location for that. Uh, when I retired for the night, um, slid my boots above the log burner. 
Is Scarpa Manta Pros with too small? Oh, no way. Oh, got See, it. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's it, isn't it? I mean, hey, mate, I, we, we've all done similar things, you know. And yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because scan, um, Scarpa Manta Pros are not cheap. Um, I've just got, just got, you've just got a brand new pair, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, the, for, the, for the peaks. Um, but yeah, it is, it's finding that balance with it. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when you're cold and things, you're not quite thinking straight and you can put them a little yeah. bit too close. Um, you know, I'd say anywhere like a radiator is fine, but yeah, when you've got a fire, like we had the log burner on yesterday and yeah, I, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to put something like that too close. Although, um, you know, getting them to dry and keeping things dry yeah. is important, especially for the day after. It's, it's a bit rubbish hiking with wet, yeah. wet feet, isn't it? Exactly. Um, actually, I was quite curious your, your opinion of them as well. I found yesterday yeah, yeah. that they were a bit wide at the, the top, you know? Yeah. So I felt I had to stop and relace them and like pull them really quite tight to, to bring the tongue and the top in a little bit. Okay. Um, I found I was getting a little bit of heel slip, um, which I don't normally get by tying my laces the way I do. So I had to kind of readjust and tie yeah. them slightly differently. Um, but other than that, really good boots, really comfortable. I quite like, um, I'm going to bring Cameron on, uh, Cameron Sylvester. What about waterproof trousers? Because I know we, we, you did start talking about the boots and keeping them dry. Yeah. But I suppose, yeah, waterproof trousers. Massive. Yeah, uh, huge. Yeah. Always have a set. Um, pretty much they live in my in my bag, I'll be honest with you. Mm. They're, they're, they're in my day pack as we speak. Yeah. So I always got them. I've just got a pair, like, a Berghouse Gore-Tex ones. Yeah. Um, I usually find with trousers that I don't pay... Uh, they're, all, they're a lot cheaper than jackets um, because yeah. naturally the, you don't need the technology in them and you want them to be a little bit breathable. So yeah. I like the ones with the poppers down the side. Nice. Yeah, they're know, good. Um, yeah, so generally over trousers is the ones that I'll wear. Um, yeah. And I'll just throw them on when I need to, when it's really cold um, or raining and they're really handy to have. Yeah. You can get trousers like Paramo, Paramo. Paramount. Where are you? We've yeah. Australia recently. I know, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> Para, I always did again, Paramo do um, trousers that are waterproof that you, they're not over trousers, they are your trousers and they're waterproof. Yeah. Most trekking trousers are kind of a little bit of water, you know, what they call resilient, you know. They're like, yeah. Water like resistant. Resistant rather than waterproof, right? Yeah. Or water um, repellent, they say. Water repellent, yeah. So Which is, is never the best. It, it means they'll keep you dry in a shower. Uh, but yesterday, for instance, I was climbing Penaban in the rain and I didn't have my waterproof trousers on. Yeah. I had a pair of Montaigne Terra trousers on and they were comfortably, comfortably dry for about half an hour. And then after that, you know, you start getting a bit wet and stuff like that. But I 100% recommend um, waterproof trousers. Yeah. Over trousers are great. They're not that expensive. Get them, throw them in your bag, two seconds to throw on, two seconds to take off. Yeah, and there's loads of options as well, isn't it? I got the uh, Burghaus Deluge. Is that the same one of you got? Pretty much, yeah. Same yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They're, I think I paid about 65, 70 pounds for them. Although, if you speak to Lee Wyatt, he might have some discount. <laughs> Looking at this. Uh, yeah, share the code, Lee. Why not? <laughs> who, 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 who with, sorry? Uh, no, I think it's uh, Mountaineer Association. You get 30% off. So. Ah, fair enough. Brilliant. If not, oh, you... that's because he's in the army. <laughs> um, otherwise, you can use your Cotswold door code. Yeah. Um, Right, let's have a little look then. Uh, what else have we got here? Some some really good questions today. This is really really good. I think Colin as well because um, I know we we talked about uh, base camp in October, but I think um, I did kill you a while ago. Expecting similar temperatures. So Everest base camp in October is uh, it can be quite warm. You know, you're talking 15 to 20 degrees during the day. So shorts, you know, base layer yeah. top. Like I said, you've got your waterproof if there's a bit of a bit of wind or you're in the in the shade. Um, Again, it can rain. Um, sometimes we've had snow in October, um, uh, and other days it's just beaming sun. So you know, wear the wear the sun cream um, because you're at a high altitude. The UV rays are so much more powerful, and yep. um, they reach. You get more re UV rays reach you rather than down at sea level. Um, so yeah, have a little think about that. But certainly, as you get higher, especially as Dave mentioned earlier, you're talking four, four and a half, five thousand meters. You know, the temperature really drops, especially in the nights. Yeah. So you can expect something like minus ten. Um, in the evenings, um, you know, it is possible. Um, and depending on when you go in October, the early months uh, can be warmer than the latter because you're kind of getting towards winter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sorry, Colin, regarding your, your dates, if it's towards the end, um, it will be um, cold, especially at base camp. I mean, wouldn't be Everest base camp without a little bit of a, a cold shiver go down your spine. Yeah. But that uh, makes you feel like you're in the Himalayas. So, part, awesome. all part of the journey. Uh, so, Kieran, you asked uh, how about the North Face product? Hey, Kieran, um, how's so it going? North Face, honestly, they're really good. 
The one thing yeah, about they, North, they're really good. Yeah, yeah. This is I the, can see, the uh, famous uh, Rainbow I've got T-shirt. Sherpa. Yeah, I've got Rep Rep Nepal with yeah. an Everest cap. I'm really on. I'm really yeah, on. You're on. You're on. This wasn't day. intentional. Yeah, <laughs> this is part of my daily wear. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, with um, North Face, the one thing to be like conscious of is that they're not just an outdoor brand; they're like a fashion brand as yeah. well. So a lot of the stuff that they do is designed more for kind of you know like streetwear and, and like fashion wear, and then other stuff yeah. that they do is designed for um, you know actual mountain use. Yeah. Um, so it's important to know what you're after with North Face. So if I'm going to buy a North Face product, I'll do a little bit of research. Their Summit series um is really 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 good yeah, a lot of years, been good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah um yeah so generally speaking i would look at um the north face stuff <laughs> and then you know separate what would be kind of more of a casual jacket from a mountain jacket generally speaking the more expensive the more mountainy it is yeah um yeah other than that yeah 100 percent use them lovely yeah nice nice question guys we got some uh uh who was it i was just trying to find uh i've probably gone through it now excuse no no it's, it's lower down slow down slow yeah down. i'll get there in a minute i'll get there here we go mark vigors i wanted to show this question if the tech works we look like a bit of tech that doesn't work yeah. <laughs> luckily it is mark vigors i have adidas terex gore-tex boots very comfortable okay for ebc um personally mark i've not used um the adidas terex range but i know i've heard it's really good mm -hmm. um Definitely worth kind of sourcing reviews. I don't know if there's any other ever trekkers on the live at the moment that's used them. Be interesting to get any any um, anyone's feedback. Have you used? Uh, no, I know I know about them. They're really. What was it like? Kesey Mountain Festival, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Really well they're, they're pretty good. Mm. Um, I would say, yeah, to do Everest Base Camp, you don't need a yeah. particularly you know technical boot. So just a good hiking boot is good not, enough. Not books. Oh uh, yeah, so, I take you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna um, <laughs> yeah. So you don't need anything particularly technical, particularly yeah. like you know designed for anything specific other than just hiking. Um, yeah. So I believe that the Terex boots would be perfectly good at yeah, good that. Um, the only thing I might sort of just look into is obviously you're going to go to Kalapatar, um, can be really yeah. cold. Um, you can also get um, you know cold snaps that are like out of season. We've kind of had one this last spring. Yeah um so yeah just um maybe you know you'll know from owning them you know whether they're particularly warm or not or whether they're really breathable yeah if they're the type of boots that when you're walking along you can feel the air rush through your feet you know sometimes you get really lightweight breathable boots i'd probably want to something warmer if they're just like any yeah. other normal hiking boot they're really comfortable 100 percent take them yeah lovely good question though mark um very good question because boots are massively important yeah i know we're here talking about waterproofs today but as always on any live any question is is, is any question is good um and yes yeah, it's, it's important to look after your feet because uh, you know we've had people who have, who have kind of brung uh, who have brought kind of maybe not the best boots a little bit uncomfortable maybe they've only just started wearing them mm -hmm. not worn in and that's when you know blisters and heat and all manner of bad stuff can happen so yeah definitely and uh, whatever boots you do get um especially you obviously got them uh, adidas terex now get out let us know how you get on um in in the mountains yeah um but it's really really good <laughs> richard how you doing Hope all is well, Richard Johnston, um, good member of the um, the Summit Zone. Um, to any anyone that hasn't heard about the Summit Zone as well, I know we've had a few uh, new members recently. Um, yeah, if one of the Yetis could just post the link to the um, the Summit Zone. Um, yeah, Richard's been um, a part a member since day one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big uh, big personality in the um, uh, in the Summit Zone has been really good, Richard. But yeah, um, <laughs> biggest issue of getting things fit for six foot He's seven. six seven. I have no idea of that because I only ever on see camera. him. On camera, I, right. I see it on camera <laughs> or sat down. Yeah, yeah. Six seven. Um, same size as your dad. Yeah, I actually um, getting things that fit for a six and broad shoulders lad. So yeah, my I got a mate that's about six seven. Yeah. Um, and he comes up with the same problem, same problem all the time. Generally speaking, he buys a lot of his clothes from like. Um, I can't remember what they're called now, but it's like there's the clothing <sighs> shop, uh, high and mighty. Thing. High and mighty. High and oh, mighty. Yeah, okay. I don't know they do. Though, I don't know they do outdoor stuff. Yeah. Generally speaking, um, that's a good niche, mind, isn't it? That's a good. If, yeah. if there's a specialist company out there that does technical gear for uh, you know people who are, who are taller. Yeah. Uh, who for, for 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 the Richards of the world. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. I've, I've not heard of one because so I'm not six foot down. I generally drop 
companies a lot of emails if I'm looking for something specific. Yeah. And I think companies have got really good at knowing that people want that sort of one-to-one -one customer service. Yeah. So generally speaking, I would find out who you want to go with and go there and try and like order them or drop them yeah. an email. And yeah, it's annoying because you'll have to do a little bit of um, like, you know, hunting around, research. but it's definitely possible. Good old research. Um, I think uh, I've just seen someone with the same boots as me. I, I knew you were going to say that. I, yeah. I, I thought I'm going to bring it up because this is like, this is like giving Dave like a, a sweet. He's going to light up. Yeah. Go on, Dave. So, um, Joel Palmer! <laughs> uh, the Maindol Tanami. Hey, Joel. Uh, yeah, I, I own them. Uh, they're brilliant. Maindol. One of my best pair of boots I've ever enjoyed owning. Yeah. Um, they're, really, they're really kind of cool. Better than the Bhutans. Uh, but, do you know what? I've, I, I know I've sung the praises of the Bhutans for many a year. For many a year now. What I will say is yeah, they're yeah. just narrow fitting for me. Yeah. They've never caused me blisters, <sighs> but every time I put them on, I notice it. Really, and I'm a bit like interested. Where when I wear the Tenales, although they're they're a totally different type of boot, um, you know they're a lightweight <laughs> Gore-Tex. However, they're kind of cool because they've got this um, little bit of like wire, which they call something. I can't remember the name of it now. Yeah, it kind of locks it. Vario fix. Yeah, yeah. And it goes around the heel, oh, and nice. it's attached to the lace. So when you pull the lace tight, it doesn't you know it doesn't get a great deal of movement, but it just holds that wire taut. Yeah, yeah. Gives you a little bit of support around Stimulity. the ankle. They're really, um, Interesting. really good boots. Lightweight as well. I think if, if I was ever going to give any feedback for any boots, I think um, yeah, the Bhutans are slightly heavier than the average uh, trekking boot. But that being said, I've, I've done so much in the main doors now. Yeah. I, 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 I go, I'm always going to have a pair. Why did for, he EBC, I stop walking? Killy. I, 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 it's Tupcar. annoying me that I, that, I, that, I, that I did move away because... Uh, you didn't I, use them for Tupcar, did you? I didn't use them for Tupcar. I used a different set, and then uh, as soon as I tried something new, that was it. Then I was down that rabbit hole. <laughs> then it was. I will say though, Joel, that I used those boots. Um, so I, I did Tupcal in December, um, and it was really, really cold. However, when I put my B twos on, um, I was like, "Oh man, they're just not fitting," and I could tell I was going to get a blister. So I made a call just to kind of go with the Tenales and yeah. use my other crampons. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it was a mistake. They weren't adequate enough for minus 25. What, the tenales? Uh, yeah, they were really, like, my feet were really cold. Yeah. I would say anything below minus 10, and I'd want a warmer set of boots. Nice. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, you've got to, there is that balance, though, isn't it? Because you can you can kind of counter that with, well, can I wear warmer socks? You could do, yeah. Uh, I mean, I had warm socks on as well. Mm. It's more about how breathable they are, letting yeah. in the cold air. You know, where when you've got a pair of mandles on, like leather boots, there ain't, lovely, there ain't no cold air <laughs> like i wore those on what well, well, we did on kilimanjaro yeah, yeah yeah and it was really cold on there everything was fr frozen except the toes they were brilliant um although i will say my um the scarpers i'm a big fan of scarper at the minute as well because i have been struggling to find a pair of b2 boots that fit well it's actually interesting i think it was some i think it was anthony actually that had um, i think he talks about scarpers i hope it brings it all but it says he had three pairs over the years love them i had several different pairs of scarper and I've noticed the fitting has gone smaller. So same problem with you then? Uh, yeah. So I generally, like years ago, <laughs> or the feet have grown. Yeah, years, <laughs> years ago, I never had an issue with um, finding yeah. them. But almost every pair of boots I try these days are, are quite narrow. Mm. Um, I had the same issue when I was looking for ski boots. You know, so I'm, maybe I've just got a wider foot. I have started wearing these bare foot say, stuff there, more. There could be a factor involved that you are wearing barefoot, and um, when barefoot apparently that you do your feet do kind of go wider. yeah well i like wearing these because they're, they're nice and comfortable and light they look a bit weird they're like flippers <laughs> but they're um they're like flippers I, I can see them right now they're uh they're, they're flippery quite flippery Woo. No, they're okay no they're fine but then yeah but when you <laughs> you see literally you can roll like to roll up a shoe like that wow weird, isn't it? And then that it, is you know so would you recommend these for every space camp then no, <laughs> like, we have had some customers. I've actually checked with someone who wore barefoot shoes the entire way. Yeah, well, um, they, they do a boot. They do a they're called the trackers, and you potentially could wear them. But personally, I just think like, and, <laughs> and I love what Joel said. Gout, maybe Dave. Yeah, yeah, potentially. Yeah, <laughs> might be on something there. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, that's, I, I tell you, Jerome's, but I, um, uh, I think George. Here we go. I love my Vivo boots. Yeah, I like this. What, what's what? Jerome's got an idea here. Why don't uh, Yetis? Why don't you do reviews, printed or digital, of waterproof boots 
downs as reference material. Uh, well, I mean, we, I've, I've done a few reviews on boots already. Done a few, we've done a few over the years. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I tell you it's, what, it's a good idea, though. Joe. I tell you what, Joe, I will more than happily do reviews, but the companies have to send me the stuff for free <laughs> because all, okay, of, the reviews, good idea. all yeah, of the reviews yeah. I tend to do is on stuff that I've bought with my own money, and then yeah. I'm not willing to kind of buy 15 others to compare them. It's um, it, it's it's a good it's a good Jen, point there, Jen. Stuck outside. I see. Do we have a Yeti <laughs> in distress? Uh, yeah. But the bat signal is up, and another Yeti to the rescue. There we go. Jen's Jen's now rescued. Exactly. Um, from being stuck outside the office. Um, sorry, where was I going with this? Yeah, with with the reviews, there are a few um articles over the years we put on there. We try to, and again, Dave said it, these these are from pieces of equipment we we've managed to use ourselves. Because yeah, if we had more free, we definitely need more reviews. Hundred percent. We need to get um, we need to get our head of partnerships, Rosie, onto it. See yeah. If, uh, see if we can get any more free gear because she's done some testing recently for a company called Vulcan um, about heated clothing. Um, she's gonna come back and, and give her kind of feedback. Um, looking forward. She's back I, in the office tomorrow. I've tried the gloves. They they look very warm. Let me tell you, they were hot. Good. See, this is why I think good in winter. Big yeah. Time. I mean. If I was ice climbing, yeah, uh, or if I was in an environment where you know, you, like frostbite is a risk, like Everest, or yeah, those bad yeah. boys are fantastic, really. Um, I mean, I put them on, pressed the button, and within seconds, I was like, well, that's actually a bit too long. <laughs> We're like, a bit too long, like, really. Again. Interesting. You I can't know? wait to. Um, maybe we'll get we'll chat to Rosie and see how she feels about chatting about them next week. Maybe we can bring her on for ten minutes and uh, yeah. and chat about that, but. Yeah, just um, just to finish off Jerome's there uh, comment. Um, yeah, if you go on to the Knowledge Center on the website, um, and we're still still with regards to the website, guys. Everyone that's um, that's got members area, that's got bookings with us, we're very close to switching on access to the new area um, because we migrated now everyone's bookings. So thanks for everyone's patience while doing that. It's been a massive process um, in terms of moving everyone over. Unfortunately, our previous systems weren't. As easy to, to kind of move data over. Do you hit your own hand? Yeah, it <laughs> <laughs> it like... made you flinch a bit. <laughs> well, because I, I talk with my yeah, hands yeah. a lot, and uh, sometimes I, I'm like, yeah, I, I do hit stuff. Luckily, I didn't hit my nose because that's yeah. still sensitive. Um, yeah, so just want to say thanks to everyone, and um, we're very close. We'll be sending you your access very soon um, because at the moment, if you want to do anything like um, any updates in the members area, making payments, um, you know, set up anything at all. Gonna have to email in at the moment, um, info at evertrek.co.uk. But anything um, anything else you will be able to do very, very soon. Yeah. Very, very excited. But yeah, just talking about the website, um, the reason I was talking about the website is Jerome mentioned there about certain articles or whether it's digital. We do have some articles around down jackets and boots in terms of um, our recommendations. But good idea, we're gonna do some ones for all the other things as well, like waterproofs, um, you know, that would be if it's useful to everyone we'll, we'll certainly do that yeah it's a good idea um awesome so anthony christian said um anyone tried hocker boots yeah um, i love hockers yeah so you anthony, good pair. questions today mate you're on it you've owned a pair <laughs> i've owned a pair um yeah you've got the hockey uh, hocker hocker one one which are the kind of more trendy yeah. ones what's the ones that your dad so no and what, myself i've got what was that called um no the one see i bought i bought a hiking boot one after a while, damn! What's the what's it what's it called? You no, know, I've forgotten the name. I know that. Is uh, I will say the I don't use race. them all. I don't use them all the time, um, but they were they are really good. I mean, if you've tried the the running trainers, then the boots are pretty much the same deal. The only problem I had with them was just trying to get the size right, um, and I found that when I wore them because they're so lightweight and quite flexible, yeah. my feet moved in them a lot. They are quite yeah, they're not the so, best fitting, are they? Yeah, on steep down climbs, my um, my toes would hit the end of the of the uh, the shoe, which after a while would be yeah. quite painful. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think in terms of just if you want a lightweight, comfortable boot that yeah. keeps your feet in good condition, absolutely amazing. I actually think. Um, uh, James Ashley there said that he used bare feet ones on the West Highland Way. Yeah, I would say something like that. Those hoppers would be choice. amazing. They but... would, because they're so soft. That's the one thing I really liked about them. Mm. They are. You, it's like you're walking on air. Yeah. But like you said, that they didn't seem to have like the ankle protection that you kind of want with like a mandel. Yeah. Uh, or a scarper. Well, that's whatever. They're built better. 
but yeah, I'll just, just research in then. Um, yeah, it's called the the Hocker One One. Yeah, but they've was got the, was in in the boot format was was the best. Well, they've got more. They've got they've got different ones now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forget what they're actually called, but I can have a look at the ones that I. Uh, Speed Goat. No, they're the new ones. They're the new ones, are they? Yeah. yeah. So I ordered. That wasn't me, by the way. That was. Uh, that was, I was Alison. Say good, I was going to say good knowledge. <laughs> that was Alison coming up with the knowledge there. Thanks, Alison. <laughs> Uh, there's a, the mine was the Sky Kaha. K A H A. Yeah, the Sky Kaha boot, which um, I don't think they, I think that yeah. may have been replaced now um, because they do have different models quite frequently. But no, yeah, really good. Yeah, and, and Mark was saying there about those boots as well. Love my boots, so comfortable, took no breaking in. Yeah. Um, although Anthony did say, just see around, uh, soles didn't last long at all on the trail runners. Yeah, I because I've got some. Um, um, some hawkers that are, are definitely um, trainers. They're they're running running trainers, and yeah, they, they haven't lasted long. The soles don't. Yeah, last Ro long. Rosie's worn through, but I guess that's the trade off. If you want it a is. really soft rubber, yeah, that's going to be flexible. That's, that's going it's going to wear out quicker. Yeah, that's you interesting, know? isn't it? Really, really interesting. Um, especially I know we've moved on to boots a lot, and um, yeah, this is this is why I love the Tuesday tuning. You never know what we can talk about. Yeah, always boots. <laughs> <laughs> so I will definitely try a pair. There we are. Anthony, let us know how you get on, mate. Um, always interesting to learn how ever trackers and the ever tracker community get on with specific boots. Cause as Dave said, you know, we haven't tried them all. Um, we learn through kind of osmosis really in terms of trying to soak in all the knowledge from the community. And obviously we yeah. tried a lot of different boots. Um, but yeah, <laughs> for what we have, I have no room in the house. I think I've got about five pairs of boots already. Yeah, I've got a few. I've got quite a number of them. Bought... No, six. I've got six pairs, including my mountaineer boots. I brought all mine in for the um, the uh, kit chat we did That's for right. the summit did, zone. You? Yeah, you did did one of those. That's another good thing about the summit zone is that yeah. it is does give me a chance, well, us a chance to work very closely with people, yeah. if not one to one, in very small groups where we can do deep dives on specific equipment. Yeah um you know so and you know we, we we normally do them over zoom so we can see what you've got as well and you know it's really kind of a good opportunity to make sure that everyone knows everything that they should know before they even get on the plane exactly. um, yeah, yeah love it which is you know and, and a big thing to, to all ever trackers that are members of the, the summit zone it's something as, as an addition you know like we're, well you know we, we don't want to stop the tuesday tune-ins we, we find them and it's been a great one today by the way thanks for um for everyone that's been on uh but the summit zone does give us an opportunity to um, much like training weekends, you know, um, where we can actually, uh, you know, have a, um, <laughs> a Yeti bonding, mm. <laughs> a nice rich. Um, no, it, it, you know, we, we do like to work closely, more closely with members to kind of get them to kind of their next level in terms of their, their goals. Um, like we've got some people on there who are climbing Killy, got some people on there going to Everest base camp for the first time, you know, whatever your challenge is, um, you know, it's definitely something that we wanted to create. And I know it's not for everyone. Um, you know, some people think like, okay, they've got it, but it's certainly, um, uh, you know, something if you want to work more closely with me and Dave, the rest of the team, definitely um, get yourself in. And as yeah. like, have yeah. uh, we dialed this brightness down then? No, no, that's the battery running. Oh, right. fair, fair, fair. <laughs> uh, um, clearly, we we got plenty of time. We've only got a few more minutes, and I suppose, uh, you know, we've got probably five more minutes. Then, in terms of summarising, waterproofs. Yeah. Trying to stay dry. You know, with regards to to trips, how would you kind of summarize that, Dave? In in, in, a, um, in in my experience, I think when it comes to waterproofing, you yeah. get what you pay for. Um, okay. So it's not to say that if you can't afford the very most expensive piece of clothing, don't bother. What I'm saying is get the best that you can afford because you do tend to get what you pay for. Um, mm -hmm. Like combine that with some research beforehand, check out all the reviews because quite often you'll find an absolute bargain yeah um and then shop around because um like very um frequently i found like last season's like um you know coat or something like that that's yeah, just yeah. A, that's just a different color so honestly doing the research, yeah, research and then it. getting the best that you can do yeah um with your budget and then you should be good to go um, exactly yeah yeah i like it Dave. And, and as you said there you know there's, there's such a broad range of, of jackets and um, you know, I know we've talked about jackets a lot, but also about boots, you know, in terms of waterproofness. I suppose when it comes to any of these equipment, uh, these pieces of equipment, it's just about looking after them, yeah. treating them, giving them a wash. Yeah. Obviously, you know, not, not everyone, you know, don't wash your boots, but just make sure they're clean and treated. And um, like, you know, depending on what material you've got, like if you're using like a Mangle Bhutan or it's a leather boot that does need waxing, 
compared to a Gore-Tex boot that probably doesn't need the same level as looking after. Um, you know, you still want to keep them clean and you can give them the old spray. Um, you know, but it's just looking after the equipment. It'll last trip, you know, many years. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had a pair of needle boutons now for the last four years. And I suppose because of the amount of use, the only thing that really goes on them is the sole. <laughs> you know, yeah. which you can get resold. Um, you know, I've got a couple now. But you've sold uh, me. <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good. Um, well, Anthony's sold as well, so that's good. Um, but no, I hope that's been useful today. Um, yeah, I know we've uh, been obviously been off uh, exploring, and um, yeah, we've uh, my, myself and Dave, I suppose, just to finish off, um, which we, we did have a little bit of rain. We were over in northern Italy, mm-hmm. um, putting together a, another new trip, and we're very excited. Uh, it's not yeah. far off now um, in terms of um, releasing that trip to a very, very beautiful part of Italy oh, called Paradise. Grand Paradiso. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It is, it's yeah. a beautiful place, isn't it, Northern Italy? Ah, yes. Especially that national park. Yeah, no, it's really good. Really exciting to launch that one as well. Yeah, it's, yeah, you definitely. know, it, it combines everything that we love, which yeah. is, you know, beautiful scenery, yeah, lovely wildlife, nice peak to climb, lovely trekking. It's got it all. Yeah, and uh, the one thing I, I, I kind of, I'm fast learning about um, Italy, um, you know, and this goes for a lot of European countries, but I love the passion for the Italians, yeah. especially around food. I mean, geez, we have so much red wine and cheese. But the passion about the environment, the passion yeah. about life, and it, it was just so like, yeah. I don't know, I, I like I like that energy. No, yeah, yeah. So I can't I, wait to do some more. Hundred percent. Yeah, we're gonna we're yeah. gonna be spending a lot of our time there. That, that's Definitely. for sure. Definitely. Well, yeah, um, yeah. To finish on that, um, to say uh, Arriva Dutchi. Um, but yeah, we will uh, be back next week. Um, Rosie will be back. Um, we'll be chatting about my okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will he like to hear about how she yeah. on Tupcal? It's always good to get one of our yetis uh, to come back. And obviously, a lot of us have done Tupcal now. Um, but it's always good to to kind of hear how she got on, especially with the new Vulcan equipment. I yep. can't wait to hear her reviews on that. Um, and yeah, uh, have an awesome week. Um, Take it easy. Any final thoughts from you, Dave? Um, no, really, just stay dry out there, people. Yeah, look and, after yourself. And enjoy your forties. Oh, that might. Be, he's, he's, uh, um, you know, I sometimes I used to do that. Take care of yourselves and each other. What's that? Jerry Springer passed oh, away. Yeah, he passed away when we were yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, we don't have any controversial uh, discussions, and we don't need any bodyguards to separate us this time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, great stuff. Well, look, thanks for everyone joining. Yeah. Great, great live. And lots of questions. Um. That's why we go to Italy. Yeah. Exactly, Mark. I did see Mark's been in Italy with a tuk tuk to a large minority. Yeah. Fantastic. Mate, we'll have to get I'll have to join you on one of those trips. They're amazing. 100%. Um yeah, and we will um yeah, we'll see you all next week. Nice one. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye.